Uh, so our next speaker is Francisco Navarro from Flatiron City, and he's going to talk about cosmic graphs. And he did his PhD in astrophysics in Valencia, Spain, and he did lots of postdocs in Italy, New York, and he's a research scientist currently at Flatiron Institute. Thanks. So thank you very much. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Maybe someone. So maybe not. Hello. 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 I can speak up, but it's very little. Yeah. I can speak up. Yeah. yeah. So, so first of all, uh, thank you very much uh, for the for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me uh, to come here. So I'm coming from, I would say, maybe a slightly different world. So I'm going to mostly talk about, you know, applications, about you know, how we can use like graph neural networks to do like, in my opinion, like really cool stuff, uh, mostly in astrophysics. So, yeah. so this is the outline of my talk. I was assuming that maybe not everybody here is familiar with cosmology. So I'm going to give you like a very kind of high level introduction about the, what cosmology is and what are the problems that we are dealing with. And then uh, I'm going to talk, you know, from a story perspective, uh, what is the way in which we have been you know, tackling these problems, very standard pen and papers, to basically very mental, uh, let's say, uh, a heavy calculation instance. And then I'm going to tell you about you know, what are the things that you know, we can do these days uh, with DMS, that is really kind of a revolution, I would say, and how we can really you know, uh, move on from this. So, so what is cosmology? So this is what the cosmology is according to chart So you can see that uh, this is what the uh, style of model is, and not where this is the right address, but the uh, I like this kind of uh, image because it really shows a little bit what you know what we really do in cosmology. So imagine that we, we were able to put the entire universe inside a crystal ball. So basically in cosmology, we will basically study what are the properties inside the crystal ball. So things that we care is like what is the origin of the universe, what is gonna be space, what is the composition of the universe, what are the laws of the universe, and uh, you know what is the structure, what is the dynamics. And all this kind of so basically properties of the universe as a whole. So I don't know how much you know of this, but this is basically the composition of the universe as we understand. We believe that five percent is yes. So we believe that uh, only 5% uh, the dynamics are only 5% of the energy containing the universe. And why is it basically everything that, that we know? So, in all kinds of atoms, molecules, everything that we know, basically, is basically what we can manage. And what is really surprising is that in the entire universe, only 5% of it is made out of this. So, we are kind of a little thing for the universe. So we believe that the dark matter represents about 25% of the energy in the universe. So we don't know what that matter is. It should be some kind of molecular particle, but we don't know how much it should be something there. And but we have a lot of metrics that is there, you know. Basically, we look for example how fast the galaxies are rotating, and they are rotating much faster than what we can really explain from basically the light and the dark and the say stars. On top of this, what we are finding is that the universe today is a plan. And this may make sense because you know, we believe that the universe started with some kind of explosion, the big bang. So you will expect that the universe will expand. But what we didn't know, and it was really, really surprising, is that the universe today is accelerating this much. So there is really no way for us to understand how that is possible. And basically, all of our influence of this, we claim that this is due to that energy. But we don't know what this thing is. It probably is some property of the battery 
So, you know, what is a kind of weird site where most of the things on it is something that we don't know. And uh, the thing that we know is only something like, let's say, the big. So, the quality, as many other branches increases, and I think many other disciplines, would have, uh, in our case, is the phantom modeling of the And this model is remarkable, basically, because why it's been a very, very large by of cosmology observations. For instance, this is a picture of galaxies, basically in the local universe, and this is a picture of the baby universe. This is a picture of the entire universe that two billion years ago. It's remarkable. So we have a model, and I'm going to claim that the cosmologists who have done the most massive data compression that you will ever do. Basically, we have a model that basically has two parameters, five and ten. We are able to explain the entire universe. The entire universe is the largest data compression that we are going to ever So, I'm not going to go into the detail, it's so important, but the cosmology parameters will describe not just for the universe as a whole. I think a big one is the fraction of the energy content in the universe that is made up of times that we were talking before. And there are other parameters that describe the properties of that matter, the properties of that energy. So, what is the goal of cosmology? So, in cosmology, the most important thing, one of the most important goals for us, is to constrain the values of these guys with the highest of these. That's kind of, I would say, the most important goal. So, why do we want to do this? Because we want to know about fundamental physics. We want to know what dark matter is. We want to know what dark energy is. We want to know about the universe. So, by measuring these parameters with the highest quality, we will be able to develop different hypotheses about you know, what that energy is or what that one is. So, to a very high level, this is basically about those models. We have a model that is remarkable, we have some parameters, <coughs> and we just want to measure these parameters with the highest quality. So, how, how do we do this in practice? So, basically, this is basically about the inference problem. So what we do is we carry out concentration. And you can think of this like you measure the position of galaxies in the sky. And you know, and we measure it, and we now and we say uh, we never will really have to work with this from there. If someone gives you like a galaxy catalog where there is a position here, a position there, we didn't know how to work with this from there. It's a very high dimensional problem. We don't know how to so in cosmology typically what we do is to compress the data into a low dimensional representation. Uh, and coming in, or coming in, number of bags, and then part of the number of pixels, where there is no way. And then from the theory side, we make theoretical application. So, for instance, this data represents the value of these multiple parameters. And basically, what you want to do is that if you have different numbers, let's say with a different composition, with a different extra time, but then that energy, how will this, let's say, summarize the history? What you call this some methods? How we this right? And this is a little bit the problem of cosmology is that for that we have one single universe. So we really need theoretical things. We cannot just take a look at the universe and not composition in the world. So we need really theoretical things. So you know, historically the, the question has been like what is the level of compression? Right? So we know. That under certain conditions, the universe is somewhat what we call like a Gaussian distribution, but it may be a very particular, let's say, structure of uh, the perturbations. And we know that you know, there is at least some of this is the power spectrum. So, in case that you don't want to see this, you might have an image, you go to Fourier space, and basically you make a histogram of the amplitude of the moment. That's very much what this is. So, under certain conditions, we know that this is really like of some statistics. And this is really remarkable because, again, this is like a picture of the universe 13 million years ago. In this case, we are able to start every single piece of information. We are able to determine this point of parameters as good as we can learn. That's my opinion of the
The drone is for twenty minutes, you know, like distribution of galaxies, the same as local algorithms. We don't know how to characterize these things. We don't know what is the let's say the data compression that fully characterizes the statistical properties of this. I mean, this is a problem that we have been in very rigorous mathematical research. You can ask mathematicians that we can do this basically mathematically and practically. So let me very briefly talk about the historic perspective here. Uh, you know, I would say, even until maybe 30 years ago, most of the community have been doing kind of benefit calculations, they usually this power table. And basically, what we do is more is some kind of data expansion. You have some equations, you assume that there are better equations that is, say, a small, and basically, you do a data expansion. If you know that at some point, it's going to happen. The problem with this kind of thing is that is that um, if the perturbation is flat enough, we mean that it is to be given the infinite number of points. This will not work. Mm -hmm. So, recently, uh, the community has been shifting a little bit more into going to numerical simulation. And the good thing about numerical simulation is that you can just solve your equation numerically, and this is in this for value. I want to show you uh, a few moments. Um, I'll spend too much time in this box, so I'm going to see that. So, what you can see here yeah, is, uh, is a distribution of matter in the universe. Uh, this one we call the C. So, C equals zero means to the very high resistive means very little. So, this is how the universe looks like. Let's say uh, very early on. We believe that the universe was very homogeneous. Very isotropic, so that's why you see everything looks very similar. And then what happened is that in this simulation, we only have gravity. And what gravity does is to amplify these perturbations. These perturbations are one at all. I'm going to say, take a look here, I don't know uh, how well you can see this, but I think you should find it. And you can see that, you know, matter is some clustering in this object that we call the Ramana and these are basically the regions in the universe where galaxies are going to be. We have a very large concentration of dark matter there, and galaxies are going to be precise. And this scale can be easily collected by things that we call the galaxies where the density of dark matter is high, but not so high. And then there are regions of the universe where there is less than that. We call these cosmic uh, points. So this is another point. So what you can see here is two different universes. They have the very same initial conditions. The only difference between them is that there is more than one in each one than in this one. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a kind of gap here in the middle. And as we move from one universe to the other one, let's take a look at this. This is a lot of the field. And when we move from one universe to the other one, things change. The position of these amount of failures changes. There are masses and all the internal structure of these things. So, I think what I want to illustrate with this movie is that when you change the composition of the universe, when you change the laws of the universe, the spatial distribution of galaxies is going to change. And now we can invert this out, say, like if we now look at the distribution of galaxies, we can see that it could sky. Can we infer the properties of the universe? So that is the problem. Let's say it's more of us. Just to conclude this part, uh, let me mention that in the very last five years, the communities have been spending really a lot of computing time uh, running the many simulations. So we have very up to date theoretical predictions. This day, we are basically having you know, the order of hundreds of thousands of this kind of. The uh, numerical simulation with beta lines of data. And basically, the community has reached like a binary conclusion. And the conclusion is that whenever we look at things, compress the data in ways different to the standard way that we have in this model, we gain information. We can start much more information. And the second thing that is very important is that whenever we look at the universe on smaller scales, we do better. So what is the problem of looking at a small scales? So you know, because we are again we are field. 
But we look at the galaxies, we say they are not working, but we never really look at them. And when we are the data, we need to plan them. Yeah? And you wonder, like, why do this? So let me say, imagine that we have a galaxy here, and this galaxy has a supermassive black hole in the center, and this supermassive black hole is a little bit of this energy amount of energy. So the thing is that this energy amount of energy that is released by the supermassive black hole is not only affecting the properties of this galaxy, but it's also going to affect the properties of all the galaxies that are near. The thing is that we don't know much about the physics of these things. This is basically our main intention right now. That if we look at the universe on a smaller and smaller scale, we need to believe it's something that really will be simply on And I have another more to this. So, this is one of our situations. Also, look at this. This is a galaxy, uh, and all these long points are galaxies. And you can see that there is a supermassive black hole, and this is the first of the gas. So you can see that the energy released by this supermassive black hole is uh, basically heating up on the intergalactic beam and it's basically affecting the properties not only of this particular galaxy, but also of the galaxies that are there. So let me conclude just this uh, first part. I almost like to make this comparison, and it's like imagine that the uh, were like 300 years ago. And we were looking at a helicopter like this. At that time, people were able to read some documents about this. I think they were able to find some others or something like that. But most of the information here was simply didn't know how to do this. I have the feeling that this body, we are in a very similar space where we have a lot of data. It's not a problem of data, the data is beautiful, it's not a problem. It's simply that we don't know how to do this. So now let me talk about uh, what in the very last few years uh, the community has been doing using you know, this kind of uh, metrical uh, deep learning approaches. But before this, let me talk about the latest that we're going to use, because this is like really important. Uh, so the data set that we are basically using is coming uh, from this project that is called Small Indian Astrophysics with Machine Learning Simulation. This is the largest set of uh, state of the art algorithmic simulations uh, ever produced. And I have more of this. So, this is one example of one of these hydrodynamic simulations. What you can see in blue, sorry, I mean, uh, it's a little bit larger from the soup, but from the super So, in blue, you can see the gas density, and in red, you can see the gas temperature. And you can see all these explosions going on. This idea. Supernova that are exploding and releasing energy, or could be like these supermassive nodes that are going to release these gigantic amounts of energy. So, the reason why we run these simulations is basically because these are the most accurate theoretical predictions that we have right now. And the top of this is basically because gas formation is a complicated process. You have the gas matter accumulating. Forming this amount of energy, we saw before. Gas is going to go, this kind of stuff, this kind of work, it's going to go down and form stars, it's going to form galaxies. But these stars are going to die. So some of them are going to explode as a supermobile. Some of them are going to form a supermassive black hole like this. And the supermassive black hole is going to release all this energy. Gas is also a beating gas to the filaments. Um, and gas is itself partner. So it's really a mess, really complicated this process. And that's why we really rely on this kind of, let's say, I would say, very sophisticated kind of simulation. So it's not this simulation, it's really expensive. And uh, you know, being able to run thousands of them is very Another thing uh, is another thing um, that is very important is like, it was born in astrophysics. Basically, because we don't know the physics of these supernova explosions, this energy release and supermassive black holes, uh, there is not like a single solution. Let's say that different groups have proposed different solutions on how to model these astrophysical processes. And probably all of these things are wrong. 
and that can be rationally because it's very nice. So everything that I'm saying is that for us, it's super important to draw the line in the simulation because that simulation is likely to be wrong. If you want to develop a model to apply to the real data, real universe, at the very least, you need to make sure that your model works in normal cases. And then what I want to do in this movie are basically six different simulations. Each of them has the same initial conditions. Each of them has the same composition of the universe. Each of them has the minutia model of asterisks, of how to release and all these things. And what different things that they do, very, very different, right? It's this one that is picking up the gas very early on. Uh, there is the one that is the antic gels coming from the massive black holes. And then there are others that they look very different. The important thing here is that all this information basically reproduce the real data. So we have six different types of simulation that give the same answer, even though they are completely different. When you train your machine learning model, it's very important that the model works at the very least in all of these different types before we have a type of But that's something that is uh, very important. Finally, uh, yeah, so this is my very basic design. Learning the networks. So, every simulation has a different model of the positive that you can see that when you change from one simulation to the other, things change. Uh, every simulation has a different model, and every simulation has, let's say, a different efficiency of how much energy to release with super lobby or with super massive. So, the whole idea here is that you have this very large parameter space, and you have something new, and you basically you want to train models to somehow better the uh, use space. All right, let me talk about the, um, uh, the GNN now, the most important topic. So imagine that everyone here, every side, is the same like an artist. Whatever I do, I will have to convince you, uh, is a problem of most natural representation, please. It's a, it's a graph. Even though the reality, the data is really a point, you know, it's not a graph. Uh, because you know, the connection between the points is not clear. The principle everything is connected to them because everything is interacting with everything through gravity. But we cannot really do what we put for that. So, you know, I give this talk to models and I need to say that you have a temporary, you have a big size, the grids is very, you know, it's very fine, you have a lot of zeros. So, in all this, uh, basically, the, the whole class uh, about this, we need to compute this possible uh, phenomenon. It's like we have now, from this simulation that I showed you before, we have thousands of beautiful universes, the most, let's say, sophisticated universes ever created. Every universe has different values the cosmological parameters. So, the idea is basically that even a graph. You want to understand the possibility of this point of view. You want to do some kind of simulation like this. And I can put it up. And let me just emphasize that for us, uh, the galaxies, the only thing that they have is position, masses, and the modules of the revolution. So, which architecture we use? I mean, it's like a standard one, and it's like a DNN with the message passing. And um, it's a typical thing of ice. We have the features, the air features, we have this layer, we have nice and about them, and at the end of the day, you apply the full operation and you want some vector, not only vector, you can do less and less and less. Maybe there is the one thing, again, I kind of much, maybe these things are kind of obvious to you, but I think what's more about this now is so, it's kind of so, and if you can, that is happening to me. So, for example, the full operation, the whatever we have to ask is we should try the maximum, the minimum, the minimum of these kind of things. Uh, we try to get different answers. So, at the end, what we decide is we try to put everything together. So, we don't use a simple pooling operation. We do all the possible pooling operations that we have. We compact the vector 
then that person will be passed to the whoever. Okay, so uh, this is like a lot of things that we use. Uh, we could have used with normalized flows and like that. We use a conversion for this is a typical means for error. If I'm sure that we do this, these are the same that we mean. Even without making an assumption about the period, you can have a lot of data like this, where this is like a big parameter and can be shown that this represents the standard deviation of the post -tick. So, yeah, you have a basis for all the good, you have only like say two parameters per, uh, sorry, two values per parameter that represent the period of the standard For us, it's easy enough. You can use normalized approach. For us, it's very important that the network is uh, S3 to buy. And the reason for this is basically if it's money that is the galaxy from a particular universe, the value of all the parameters is going to be the same. It will translate the graph. If you rotate the graph, it's going to be the same. So we're going to read the post the SC3 uh, in value. So let me tell you how we do this. I don't know if this is very precise. So, what? The S3 has to be the living. Uh, yes, in principle, we want to impose also the, the parent violation. Uh, yeah. In the general, usually we assume that we are systematic to this, uh, but there are some models that are so different. But in this case, I think it's that. So, for every node, for every class, remember we have positions and two scales. Have the masses and we have the models of the velocity. So, the way that we must draw the graph, this is a piece of the graph, is like our graph is a SC3 invariant, basically, just coming from the from the models. That's pretty good. So, for the models, we just put the masses and the velocities, and we don't use any positive information from the models. So, what do we know about the position information? So, what we do is the problem is that the imagine that we have the graph. So we can define some form. In our case, it's like the electrical center, but it can be really named for the data. And then, from this form, you can definitely compute vectors, like, for instance, if you are just in this edge feature, uh, you will have this one vector, the other vector, this vector, basically, we call uh, so the data paper. And uh, what we do is that we go as edge features. Basically, all possible information of the scalar functions in the normal spectrum. Right? So, we compute basically one of them is like the distance between the two points, and the other things are the scalar functions. And the beautiful thing about this is that this is already translation and translation of the You can take this graph, you can obtain the angles, you not know, change, the distance is not going to change. And you can focus on these things and not much more things. So, it's you know, it's a very simple thing. The level of the not features instead of writing positions that are not, let's say, a uh, supreme variant, you basically write things in this language. Yeah. Then by abstraction, you know, it's a supreme variant. So, this is how one of the typical graphs for us would be like. Uh, basically, we connect two points if the distance between them is smaller than even. Uh, left. This left is a hyperparameter and we optimize for it. And this is basically what the model is. So somehow the model does not prepare the prepare a very connected graph. It could be like over the spatial and all these things. But this, this is so from the control perspective, this is uh, very nice because we only have like one thousand times every graph. By the spatial, the model is a supreme value. Um, basically, what we always say in cosmology is that if you are doing this, you are extracting information from even the smallest scale. You can have two galaxies that are super close together. In principle, the graph is not extracting information from this. This is very different to what we do in cosmology. What we do in good learning, and the bit is, let's say, very close. So, then you know, basically, we train on, we have like 1,000 of these graphs, we train at the end of this. And let me show you the results. So this is like a typical flow of truth versus prediction. Uh, this is for one of these parameters. And every dot of there, and with the other parameters, and the mean standard deviation 
is high in the back line. Of the process that were the black line, the red line. So this was for a moment that we trained on simulations. And we test on simulations that were not this. So we know that this is a good one. Um, the problem for us, and I'm pretty sure that this is another piece, is that if you train your model using some particular simulation, so now you change some of these simulations, say the code or something. Nothing. So in this case, you know, we were surprised that we test the model on different code, worse, another code, worse, another, 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 another. So sometimes it was really the past. And on the cosmology, this is kind of the and this is the very first time that in cosmology we are able to go to this incredibly small scale, dealing with all these nasty pieces that I should be talking about, you know, all these energy release, like supermassive black holes, and all these things, especially we marginalize these processes. So this is, you know, it's kind of um, a completely new work still going uh, for them. Let me talk about the um, interpretability. A little bit, so I don't want to mention this morning about so using the kind of science and mass interpretability. In our case, we do something very different. So imagine that you have your uh, DNA and you have a drive of this instant uh, features and one of these function of edge features and top features. You can put a signal in for the top features. At the end of the day, you can put everything together and it's going to be Imagine that you only have in one day. So basically, you can have you can write the parameter, you are doing this extra measurement. There are some functions that are like this. But the important thing is that these functions only depend on the scale of functions. I mean, they could be there for training, but if you are careful, you will be able to design your DNA as a little more of the smallest, let's say, that are very possible. Then the beautiful thing is that you can try to approximate these functions. Using symbolic no? and get an identity equation, the best case the project is. So, this is a lot that it was done by a graduate student at Princeton. Um, and basically, we took the DNA model that we trained before, and she was able to write this set of equations that, um, yeah, I mean, the model you can never see anything like this. Uh, but what is remarkable is that you take these equations. You apply to a galaxy country, you get the correct thing. It's still not clear to us what exactly this means, but this is some kind of like scope, right? It's like you can combine DNAs, if you design them, you can only find the information, but you can find the information, the data vector is more possible. But you, know, you might be able to derive that which probably contains some pieces already on the right system. Let me talk before the uh, on this part. So I wish we had some challenges, but we are not like so much uh, We don't know how many billions of millions or even billions of galaxies that is uh, really what we need to live in the real universe. This awareness is really the most, I believe, the most important. I should report that the DNA that we have, you can have some questions about more to know them, but we will use it for systems. Masses and velocities. If you train your model only using positions, you train on one simulation doesn't work for this. And it's really a real mass that you know, will be more than happy to tell you ideas about this. You know, you can try to get an you can try this kind of things, but it's really a real mass how you can really get an out of all these things. So that's very big uh, problem. Let me quickly just uh, Analyze this uh, method and other maybe good applications and uh, with years that people are doing that the physics these days. So imagine that this is a lot of the So this is why we call this very large concentration of that matter. So usually, you know, you can think of this like one galaxy and I don't think it's the way to do this on satellites, galaxies. So again, you can represent this as a graph. And you know, in astrophysics, uh, for a very long time, we always wondered what is the mass of our gas, you know, how heavy is the medium. Mm -hmm. So people have tried many techniques, of course, but you know, if you have simulations, if you try a simulation, or if a simulation, you don't have something that you can manualize over, 
And this is the very last uh, thing. <laughs> That's about the nature of that. As I told you, the nature of that model is not a big problem in the small and in general. What I'm going to show you uh, is like two rules. So, this is one move where we have like what? Five of that model. <laughs> this is the other one that model is small. This is another type of that model that is small. It's just basically saying that the matter might have some very good values, some very good values. So what happens here is the distribution of that matter um, uh, of this the dark scale. And these files are going to be basically almost in this region here. And this is like the light, this is like a, a, a stereo. So what you can see is that uh, this area is kind of uh, strong, sacrificial, mass, and other chaos. This is the gas in the center, and you can see that the gas is sacrificial. This one produce a beautiful spiral here. And from time to time, if you look at here, you can see some explosions. This is a head. Explosion came from supernova at this, at this place. So what you can see, the problem here is that the very computer change the nature of that matter. Things change about the distribution of these satellites. It's really different in the two cases, but also the the tasks that set up. So, you know, these days we are, the community is wondering about the, what can we do with the, let's say, chain learning and practical beginners to. Uh, to answer this question, because even in the street, traditionally, we have been looking at some particular property and some practical properties when we just try to extract all the measurements. So, I think this is oh, so. This is like one example of the many guys uh, in many different geometries, in different. I don't try to say that someone wants to use this data set, everything's bad, everything's uh, it's like I don't know, super cool application. But yeah, this is like the last slide. Uh, also, what we do here for this kind of thing is the data loop, the distribution of satellites, the galaxies, using not only maybe the position of the images, the combining all these things in the graph, things work. And it's quite uh, well hard. So, in cosmology and astrophysics, these days we are really taking advantage of the basic world that you guys are doing. Conclusions, the uh, week, and we are going uh, to about the loss of the constituents of the universe that we, the most important thing for us. Uh, historically, we have been doing this with Graham Baker, recently with numerical simulations. Now we keep learning that we have seen a revolution, you know, there are very hard questions that we, some of us, in five years or so, that it would be completely impossible to work on that. We are not solving that. And I think in astronomy, you know, many, many things, and nothing special about this is Instagram. So that's why I believe GNS is not even that good. I think my lab is an example of it, and it was a full time. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, if you have a question, so we're going to that way. You said that you have to that you're going to assume that data, that's how the data is going to be, and the data is going to be. Yeah, that's the question. 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 Yeah, that
Exactly. So we do basically like a over extends because this is not that we must take this one and let's say like over extends. So then you have one thing that is uh, I swear that this is gonna be the equivalent to this over extends. And we basically yeah, see that there the last time. It's sort of bothering something that they have to make the truth from and it's often here because it's like low damage, right? It's a lot of things, right? Uh, the truth is low damage. But you see, like, just like, like, how, like, what is the thing like? So, like, a so this game is running like a graph that has two chips, So, then for this, you create a graph and then you, know, you, you test the DNA. Okay. Yeah. You said that the several of that were uh, called the most for practice and go are being sold. What do you think is going to be the next one? Well, some of the focuses, if you can explain anything, how there is a state of the sum of the That's a good question. I mean, for that matter, the problem is that the, so for the whole universe, that we have a model, the model is something that we draft a lot, should be a model of inferring these parameters. So in that case, it's kind of clear. For that matter, the things that we don't even have a model, there are different proportions. So in that case, I think the, the volume parameter space is much larger, and it's not really that clear to me how you can take a model and different different parameters. That page, you can see this is another one. But to really say that this is like the, two, the best model, that's I'm not sure. So maybe things are going to go that direction. Um, yeah. So you mentioned at some point that you're going to all of these things. That Yes. So, is there any specific reason that you are doing that for the pooling? And what is the difference between the idea that you map for the pooling with these principal negative aggregation, the PNA technique for getting concatenating all of these, passing it to another layer of MNT and layering the Yes, so that's a, I mean, as far as I know, probably it doesn't really matter so much the volume that you do is as far as the network is going to now. But in our case, it's like if we did the one time, the max, the mean, the sun is the best one, it's like let's do everything together. And it was not a problem for us, you know, if you think of the money, you treat like why not? Just you make it more general. Any other questions? <laughs> 